Man, how hard could it be? I mean, you, you know, you turn left, you turn right, you hit the gas, you hit the brake. I've grown up racing my whole life, right? I grew up with my, my father, he was a motorcycle racer, off-road motorcycle racer, and I, uh, I followed in his footsteps and learned to ride dirt bikes at a young age and started racing at a young age. And I got just fast enough to uh, get hurt really bad, right, when I crashed. So multiple knee surgeries, shoulder surgery, broken leg, broken arm, broken wrist. I paid the price of learning to ride motorcycles at a, at a fast pace. I transitioned to jet ski racing when I was about 14 years old. I went to my first race and as a young 14 year old kid I went to go watch and there were girls everywhere in bikinis and it was at the beach and I, I was telling my dad I was like man dad this is it man this is way better than dirt bike racing in the woods I was hooked I won my first race in a beginner class and raced jet skis throughout high school and into college and just kept growing every year I won the Tennessee state championship as a novice uh, I went on to race in the national tour as an amateur uh, won the amateur national and world championships a couple years turned professional uh, when I was in college and uh, won some uh, Pro-Am championships and uh, raced for a couple of the manufacturers and started earning a little money and actually earning money versus spending it. Those forms of racing are kind of young man sports. As I got into my 30s, I was a uh, elder statesman in uh, jet ski and, uh, and motorcycle racing. So car racing was always something I wanted to do. It's been big in my family. My mom, she grew up around NASCAR. My, my grandfather, he was a mechanic on a NASCAR team the very first year they raced on the beach in Daytona. My mom, when she got older, she and my dad got into Legends car racing. I always knew that I eventually want to try in the car, uh, but I was just kind of saving that, right, till I got a little bit older. So a couple years ago, I decided now's the time and started uh, doing some high performance driving schools. And my first real experience driving it in a proper car with a proper driving coach was Road Atlanta with Lee Keen. Lee's become a good friend of mine over the years, and I asked Lee to take me around the track and kind of show me, you know, some pointers and what he knew and uh, that was the first time that I got a real shock that I know nothing about driving race cars fast. I mean, I, you know, I looked at it, I was like, man, how hard could it be? I mean, you, you know, you turn left, you turn right, you hit the gas, you hit the brake. I mean, coming from what I did with smashing into other jet skis and 12 foot waves and motocross and 70 foot jumps and this is easy, this is simple, you know, this is what old people do. And uh, I was sorely mistaken. <laughs> the first race car that I bought was a Porsche GT4 Club Sport. And it was based off the Cayman chassis and a great car. I mean, amazing, amazing car. And that's what I was really kind of cutting my teeth with for about a year and a half. I never did race it wheel to wheel, but I was learning. I was doing track days in the high performance driving schools. I quickly learned right off the bat that I had no idea what I was doing. The first stage of learning, you're, you're unconsciously incompetent. That, that means you're dumb and you don't even know you're dumb, right? You, you advance into uh, becoming consciously incompetent. Now you at least are aware that you're dumb. I moved to that stage really quickly, right? Uh, I think a lot of us in the car world, we're unconsciously incompetent that we all kind of think, oh, I've got a fast car, or I've, I've driven you know, up on the Dragon pretty quick, or I've even done some track days. What you can do in a street car does not translate into a race car. And it immediately hit me in the face that I have no idea what I'm doing in this, in this race car. So uh, I'm disciplined enough to accept that and, and say, Hey, before I ever compete, I, I got a lot of learning to do. But uh, I heard about Lamborghini Super Trofeo uh, through our Lamborghini dealership, and I'd seen some races on TV, but I didn't know much about the series, and obviously knew they were very powerful cars. And I, mean, I was that kid in the 80s with the Countach on the bedroom wall. I mean, the, the first exotic car I bought was a Gallardo, and it's at our Lamborghini Atlanta dealership, and they were talking about they have a racing school called Pelota. They start in the regular street Huracans, and then at the end of the, it's like a three day school and at the end of the school you can you actually take laps in the Super Trofeo and it was going to be in Las Vegas and it was coming up a few months away and so I'd like to go to the school and just try that car out you know driving the street Huracans was fun on the track it's a great car and the transmission everything was super good I felt comfortable and I remember when they brought the Super Trofeo race cars out I mean in person it is just the nastiest meanest car I have ever laid eyes on in my life the sound I mean saw it it just hit me like a ton of bricks I'm like I am wasting all my time and, and money and effort racing anything else but this. Then I actually got in it and drove it, and it kicked me in the ass pretty good <laughs> the first time I drove it. It had such an effect on me. I came back and I was like, 
I got to sell the Porsche and I got to start working towards Super Trofeo because that's just what I want to do. If it takes me another year or two years of training and practice, that's what it's going to be because that's the car I wanted to race. So. The truth of the matter is there is no magic fairy that is going to come along and grant anyone on planet Earth, hey, would you like to come drive my race car, you know, for, uh, for free or for any little amount of money. That, these are things that just don't happen. Every successful, even professional race car driver, dude, they, they paid their dues. Most of them started in karting and worked many years and lots of dollars spent before anyone was ever paying them to drive a race car. So the first thing you have to know is that it does cost money to get started, right? Money is obtainable, right? And I go back to business. Personally, I set goals. I know that I wanted to drive a race car one day. I found out how much it costs to drive a race car. And I went back to my business and I worked for many years with a very specific goal in mind. In most cases, it takes years. I started my business 18 years ago. You have to buy the car and then what it costs to run the entry fees and the fuel and the tires and the, the team support it takes it's not just a car you can go on your own to the track I mean it takes mechanics and setup and financially it's about the same as buying a big car like an Aventador right now my goal is to race at the Daytona 24 hour very few people have had the opportunity to race in that event and that's what excites me I mean I, I like achieving difficult things right and I'm patient enough to allow the time that I don't have to achieve that goal right now or in my first year or second year. Usually on the grid, we had 20 to 25 cars on the grid, but of those 25, seven were in my class. And we had 12 events. It was really competitive between me and one other guy in the class. We each won every race, I believe. Uh, I won six of the 12 events and, and he won six. I had some unfortunate incidents in some of the uh, races that I did not win. I lost the championship to him at the end of the year in our class by a few points. I definitely had the momentum at the end of the year. I won the last few races, so I feel good about my first year. Uh, obviously, next year I'll be coming back. I advance up to the next level in the amateur class. That's where I'll be competing against former IndyCar, you know, competitors and Ferrari Challenge and GT3 Cup champions and guys that have raced for 10 and 20 years. But at the end of the year, there's one race, the, the World Finals, that they bring all of the competitors from all across the globe for one location. This year was in Imola, side of the former Italian uh, Grand Prix, you know, it's famous for that's the track. Unfortunately, it's Senna, you know, passed away. And I competed there this year against all of the Lamborghini Cup class competitors from around the world, as well as they combined us with with the class ahead of us, the amateurs. So everything I had learned for the whole year kind of came to a culmination and I qualified on the pole of the entire grid of not only my class, but the class ahead of me. And it was the first time ever that a first time competitor in the history of Super Trofeos won the pole in that class. Long story short, in the first turn, I got into a crash. Uh, I was in the lead, a guy hit me from the back going into the first turn, spun us out. Uh, everyone spun, went off the track. I rejoined the race in uh, dead last place. The entire field passed me. I turned the fastest lap of the race going through the traffic. I passed all the way up to seventh position, passing for sixth place position, which was also for the lead in, in my championship. I got into another crash with the same competitor from the United States that we have found each other multiple times throughout the year. He was obviously trying to win the world championship. I was trying to win the world championship. He went off the track, came back on the track, hit me, and uh, took us both out of the race. It actually caused a red flag with about six minutes to go in the race. Uh, a lot of drama. My car went up in the air, spun around, hit the wall. It was the biggest crash I've ever had, but I was safe. I was okay. We both walked away. When there's a red flag, the results are the, the lap previous. Uh, that lap, I was in second in class, and he was in first, so I got second place there in the world finals, but I definitely had the speed. Everyone in the Super Trofeo world is aware that I'm going to be very highly competitive in that next class for this next year. So looking forward to that. I'll return to Super Trofeo and I'm also entering another series. Uh, I'm still going to race a Lamborghini, but I'm racing in the uh, Pirelli World Challenge, which is a multi-make series and it's a pro-am event. So I'm going to be on a driver team, right? So I'm, I'll be the amateur driver on the team and I'll be paired with a professional driver. And uh, I'm driving with the guy, the guy who is my coach this past year, uh, Davide Amaduzzi. He's an Italian GT championship driver and he's competed in GT three and multiple class championships uh, over his career. So I'm fortunate to be able to drive with him and compete in that series as well. So going after two championships this next year. Are you looking to buy your dream car? 
Premier Financial Services offers the flexibility of financing with the tax benefits of leasing. The PFS Simple Lease offers quick approvals and easy termination when you are ready for the next car. Visit our website and follow us for more.